Unless you guys have questions for him. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw him play noon ball, you definitely have your questions. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ryan, go ahead. Matt, just the way your three seniors played down the stretch, that's kind of the perfect senior day story. Yeah, all three of them made you know significant plays. I thought Travion was able to get some rebounds. He made his turn first two free throws, got a couple baskets. Sasha made the big three. But uh, Eric Hunter uh, really made some nice plays. I know he missed that last one, but it was a really good decision and a really good drive. And that's kind of what was there for us is some of those open drives that didn't involve Jay Ivey. They did a great job, Indiana, of really loading up on him and, and, and making it difficult. You have to give them credit for them. But no, Travion, Eric, and Sasha all, you know, really contributed to this victory. Yeah, Coach, second chance points, 15-2. to two. I know you're a bigger team, but just a one-two on that and the fact that it seemed to spray particularly early a lot of uh, a lot of baskets in the first half on second chance. Right. You know, I thought, you know, Mason had a couple of those plays early that, that he kept alive. Zach has four offensive rebounds. Travion has a couple. But Eric and Jaden also have a couple. Being able to get on the glass and just keep getting those possessions um, and not turning the ball over. Both teams did a good job of not, you know, having a high number of turnovers. But, you know, just trying to scrap. You know, we had the game, you know, we were up 13 there in that first half where we had some possessions to push the game out a little bit and give Indiana credit because we weren't able to do that. But we had some some shots there that we, you know, like to get back that were pretty open. Some of them are kind of the reloads, the offensive rebound kickouts when it's tough to match up. Is that your phone? It's not my own. I have my phone on. <laughs> yeah, the team phone. There you go. <laughs> uh, talked yesterday. Just the value of having Mason on the floor for extended periods, and just not only the rebounds, just how he kept plays alive. Right. That led to pretty important baskets. Yeah, you know, he's he's got a motor, and, and sometimes with that, like if somebody gets in his way, he'll, he'll truck him and, and get some of those fouls. But no, he, he's very active, and his ability to keep plays alive, you know, really helps us. And, you know, just not having him in some stretches in the last couple games, when you look back, you know, you, you wish he could be out there more, and tonight he was. Coach, uh, you spoke about the, the late, uh, the good plays uh, from your seniors down the stretch, but Trevion's defense on the inbounds play there, just his ability to kind of process everything in front of him and get that reflection, just what does it say about yeah. the defender that he is? Yeah, thanks for reminding me of that. I didn't I didn't mention that, but that was a huge play. You know, he, he's gotten that position before. And, you know, you get stuck a little bit when you have somebody that can jump off a trampoline like Trace Jackson Davis, and then you have a guard who's really giddy into the paint and really putting you in a bind. So you, you're you playing them in between because you really want them to shoot that tough floater. You, know, you want to keep them away from the threes and the dunks. But he's, Trace Jackson Davis is so good at diving right there. They, they really put you in the mix. But Travion did a great job on that play of just having active hands and then getting that steal for us. What did you see happening on the stretch of five turnovers and six possessions? And what stretch? Uh, the stretch of five turnovers and six possessions. In the second half? Yeah. yeah, you know, we just kind of lost our way like a couple times just they did a good job of overloading, um, you know, and, and just making it tough and just loading up um, when we were driving the basketball. And then we just didn't make simple plays where we thread the needle on one, another one, a guy's open, but then we wait for him to get covered. And just, you know, that that's, you know, it's been a little bit of an Achilles for us is when we get guys that just don't make the simple play. And when, when, we, when we try to overdo things, when they put two to three people on the basketball and don't make simple passes, you know, we get in trouble. So it was nothing complex. It was just guys, you know, not getting the ball out of their hands or trying to overdo something. Matt, with the uh, with those one one possession losses at Michigan State and Wisconsin, when they got up three here, uh, came right back and scored the next three possessions too. How good did that feel just that they responded so quickly like that? Yeah, you know, our, our, our issues, you know, in those games, you know, we, we actually responded in those games and scored, you know, and, um, you know, Jaden made a basket, Jaden made a drive. We executed great, and Zach missed that layup against, you know, Wisconsin, that little baby hook that he had right there. So that's that's what you want from your guys. Even if you miss shots, you want to be able to execute and get a good shot. And then, you know, right as that happened, um, you know, our, our guys did a good job of executing, getting to the free throw line, and then getting open looks. Matt, 25 wins for the ninth time under your watch. Fifth time in six years, you have the best record at home. You're making some things second nature here that are impossible for other folks. Your thoughts on those accomplishments? Well, I think we have a, a great advantage, just like Indiana has an advantage when you play at home. You know, those, you know, getting a team and trying to build and keep developing and having older players along with that environment helps a lot. So, you know, we have 
some older guys on our team. We have some experience. We have some really talented younger guys too. Um, and I think that's the mix in college basketball. Um, people, it's gonna be harder for people to get older and stay older, but that's the key. If you can get old and stay old, um, and you got guys, you know, I got two guys that have been with me for four years, another guy that's been with me for five. And so like they understand, they get it. And um, that's the key. And not everybody's having that. You see a lot of people running out in college basketball, just, you know, it's like trading baseball cards. They're, you know, guys are playing on two, three, four teams in their college career. And it's not that they're not good players or they have the right to do it, but how are you supposed to build and develop? You know, how are the Spurs supposed to be great with that run without having those guys stay, you know, with that organization? But we, we have a great environment. We have, a, you know, an unbelievable advantage. You know, I, I think playing here, our fans really give us an advantage. Matt, up, up to with Williams at the free throw line, he misses two free throws and Johnson grabs a rebound. Correct. What's going through your mind with the chance for Indiana to win it? They, um, well, when I was talking about the previous one and that one, if they're gonna, if they're gonna, we're gonna make one of those, we're gonna foul at half court. So I'm just making sure our guys know that we don't lose our mind if we make two or lose two and we go to foul. Like I'm just, you know, that, that's always my concern right there is, you know, we do something really stupid and, and, and foul when it's two or four. You know, it's gotta be a three and we gotta wait for them to get the half. So that was, if he was making that last one, I was trying to get our four to, to go pick the ball up so they wouldn't have a clean pass up the court. And, and then once it didn't happen and then they miss, I was just yelling no threes. Like, you know, make him drive. Like no threes, stay at home on the three, make it difficult for him. And then I don't know what happened right there. I kind of took my eye, I'm looking right at it and he has a lane to go and he's at a half court. I don't know if he tried to like get into him and, and he got fouled or he like jumped, but he's at 50 feet, he's at 45 feet. He's in that kind of like, you know, you're not gonna shoot it at that point. And, and so I, I gotta go back and watch to kind of see what happened right there. But I was just trying not to lose that game right there. But like it's, when you got a guy that's a shifty Xavier Johnson, that's where you're in, you're in danger. Cause like he can cross somebody over real quick and then just have a three. Um, and so that's why you should, you know, not put yourself in that position. Matt, you're now in a term of time, one term and then another. How do you feel right now about where you are? Do you feel good about where this team is? You know, you're, as a coach, you're always greedy. You want to be better. You know, you, you want to, you know, I, I thought we put ourselves in a really good position um, in that second half after we put ourselves in a good position in the first half. Like, we just had some extreme runs there, you know, for and against us. And then when we subbed, you know, it just kind of happened at that time. Then I took those guys out and put those guys in and just stayed with them. And I felt you feel bad about that because you like those guys, but that mix just didn't work in that in, in that stretch. So just trying to get consistency. You know, I know we're 25 and six, and we're going to be second or third in the league, whatever we end up in our league and um, going into the Big Ten tournament. But I, I feel like if we can give ourselves a chance and not turn the basketball over, you know, I like our chances. Doesn't mean we can't get beat in the quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament, in the first round, of the NCAA tournament. <coughs> But when we take care of the basketball, we give ourselves a pretty good chance to win the game. And it's not the only thing that matters. I thought, I've thought our defense has been better, you know, here in the past couple of weeks. We're, we're still not, you know, where I think we need to be. And so we, we just got to keep working. So but a lot of it depends on, like, who we match up to in the Big Ten tournament, like who we match up to in the NCAA tournament. Those <coughs> matchups are going to be important. But you can still, you know, do the constants. You can still take care of the ball. You can still rebound. You can still help each other out. Coach, and uh, going back to Johnson's shot, they, they put um, time back on the, on the clock, and now you guys have to regroup and, and reset and yeah. get the ball back in. Just how much confidence did you have in Trevion to, to make that play? Because, I mean, there's some things that can go wrong. I know it's not a lot of time, but is yeah. he a person you want to have the ball in, in his hands to inbound it in that moment? Yeah, he's, you know, obviously, uh, he's a really good passer. Um, at point three, they can't shoot the basketball, so you got to understand that. So a lot of people think you should throw it long, and it's actually the last thing you should do. As you throw it long and no one touches it, and the ball comes back to the, you know, where we were taking the ball out, and now they can throw a lob play and tip it in. So it's the last thing you want. You'd rather hand the ball to them than throw the ball to the other end. Because if you hand the ball to them, they're not going to just tip it from out of bounds. They got to, they got to turn and shoot it. So you absolutely can't shoot the ball in. You can tip it or tap it in at that time. So that's what we call the timeout, just to make sure no matter what you do at the worst, if you want to throw it at his ankles, throw it at his ankles. You know, if you want to hand him the ball, hand him the ball. But we're going to obviously cut and just pass the ball to each other and uh, finish the game. So that's what we were, that's what we were discussing. We were just explaining the rule to them.
Last one, Brian. You did a pretty good job bottling up Johnson for 16 minutes, and they started working that, that high ball screen with right. Trace. What were the challenges in that? Yeah, we wanted to down some of them after he got going for a while, and then we had a couple guards like mess it up. One of our guards downed on his own, and that's when you saw Miller Cops three that he hit. We just botched that whole play. So we were just trying to box him in to the best of the ability. When you box people in and you down them like that, and you got an athletic big, you can't let him behind you. Because if you let him behind you, they're going to throw those lobs mm -hmm. as they drag your big guy down. But you're not letting him get into the middle of the floor. So we were really trying to get Xavier Johnson into as many pull-ups and floaters as possible and not let him get to the rim. And he obviously got to the rim a couple times. on a Trace made it really good on a snake. Trace made it really good. Um, they called it gore time um, in terms of just blasting that guy at the rim, and then he snaked it and got that layup. He did, he did a good job um, you know, with that. So that's all we were trying to, to get accomplished there. But he, he's a good player. Xavier Johnson's very shifty, and when, when, he, when he takes good shots, man, he really puts you in a bind. Chris, one more super quick. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. It don't matter. Five years ago, when you talked to Sasha about redshirting, you said it. He could help you a lot more in 2022 than he could in 2017. When you look back yeah. on all he's done this year for you yeah. in this fifth year, does that sort of put the stamp on why you registered guys and hoping to get stuff out of them down the road? Yeah, no question. You're going to be better when you're 22, 23 years old versus being 18 or 19. I think that's an easy thing. And then you come into college basketball and you don't lose your confidence. Like, you know, you're, you're, some people are physically overmatched when they get there, and then people deem them not good enough. They're good enough. They're just physically not ready. And so it's, you know, you got four or five years experience on somebody and then you got, you know, a physical advantage. So you just got to kind of catch up to speed with knowing what's going on in a program and then developing physically. But you don't lose your confidence when you don't play and you redshirt. So if you just don't play and you sit the bench and you burn a year, like, you know, there's a, you know, you got the small man in your ear, you know, telling you you're not quite there, you're not quite good enough. And that's not the case. And so I'm, I'm a big believer in you, you become what the head coach thinks of you. And when I watched him, I thought he was a good player. And so I've coached low major basketball, mid major basketball, high major basketball. And if you're good, you're good. I don't like to label guys. I hate the numbers. The numbers stink. You know, anybody in this room can tell us who the top 20 players in the country are. But from 21 to 500, I mean, Zach Eady's like in the 300s. And how foolish are they? Chris Kramer is like 430. Like, only thing those two guys have done is win basketball games here. I don't know what Sasha was ranked, but I could care less. It's the dumbest thing in the world. Like if you sign with the school and you're like, it's a blue blood and you were 27, you're automatically 16. Like, how, how does that work? You sign with a non-blue blood and you're 45 and all of a sudden you're 74. And it's like, it's ridiculous. You'd be amazed that you see people in the 30s and there's some guys not even ranked. And you're like, you don't. It's like Indiana, like Indiana, like Rob Fennessey. Like I, I loved Rob Fennessey. I thought he was great. I thought he was a winner. I just, he had a lot of winning qualities about him. Like, when you rank guys, you, you can't judge what's in their heart. When you go and recruit them and spend time with them and see them, like, you see that. That's the about The evaluation is your work ethic. You know, do you have any baggage? Like, you know, just because things are going to happen. Things are going to happen. So to get a guy like that who just wants to help Purdue win and can make shots and can move and can pass, you know, that's fun. He's got, he's got heavy feet, but that's okay. It's a lot of good people with heavy feet. So, <laughs> Hey, Matt. Um, Let's talk about the legacy of Purdue. Coach Katie in the house today, senior day. I mean, a lot of, a lot of schools go through a lot of coaches, and you guys have, you know, to that, together is kind of very unusual. What do you think about your legacy here, or just the legacy of basketball coaches at Purdue, yeah. where you fit in? Well, I'm fortunate because, I, you know, I have a blueprint to go by. You know, he laid the blueprint, whether, you know, academics, you know, how to handle things socially, how to handle things within your program. Um, you know, I worked for, you know, three of the four people that I – that coached me and, and so like traveling with those guys and hearing stories and you you think you know so much when you're 21 years old and then as you get to be 31 and you get 10 8 9 10 years under your belt coaching you realize you do very little and you still realize you know very little like you know you to the everything will humble you you know the game will humble you and so but no we we had a great blueprint from coach katie and how to run a program like anybody can have a good team but can you consistently have a good team can you consistently try to do things the right way? Because not everybody's perfect. You're not going to have things happen perfect, especially socially. You know, you take 15 to 17, 19 to 22 year olds in any fashion, anything that they do, like something's bound to happen here. Like it's just the way it rolls. So you got to do a lot of things to try to do from a prevention standpoint to help those guys 
you know, so they don't they don't put themselves in there. And it all comes back to Coach Katie, and, and Coach Katie was actually great. Like, you know, you, you'd mess up or you would do something, and, you know, he, he would obviously have some discipline, but he would always stand by you. And uh, that, that's something that we try to do with our guys, but also hold them accountable. I think telling them the truth, they might not like it. I don't think every one of our guys likes me, and uh, that's all right. But that's not what you're there for. They've got a bunch of people out there that like them. You know, they don't need one more. You know, they need someone to hold them accountable and tell them the truth. So, thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs>